It seems that there is a recent trend to oppose baptism by desire, but at the same time to accept absolution of sins by desire and marriage by desire. What do I mean by that? It is true that a man, if he uses the correct formula, I baptize thee in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and does so with water, living water, that that is a valid baptism. But remember, the Council of Trent defines three things necessary for validity. Matter, form, and intent. So that man must also intend to do what the church does. He can't just use it as a convenience or as a way to be independent from the church. To go around to baptize people without having the intent for that person to be fully incorporated into the mystical body of Christ, to receive the body and blood of Christ, and to live his life within it, to be absolved from the the sins from the mystical body through the priesthood. So I want to just highlight intent. We know what the matter and the form is of most of the sacraments, but what's the intent? Pope Leo the, the 13th says that the intent is known by the ritual. And he's not saying this for the first time. He is just repeating again what was handed to him. The ritual. The ritual tells us what we intend to do. That it tells us that we intend to do what the church does. So if one were to think, all I need to do is go to anybody or everyone and baptize them, and they'll be saved. If a man is drowning in the water and you pull him out, he's saved. That doesn't mean he's going directly to heaven. It's proximate salvation. All of these words are not understood anymore. We use them to mean something that they don't mean. A man is saved within the mystical body of Christ. He is incorporated by baptism, but baptism is not the final end of it. So let's look at the intent then of the other two sacraments. Confession. I've heard over and over again that all one needs to do is make a perfect act of contrition. Have you seen the definition coming from the church of a perfect act of contrition? It means that you must have no doubt whatsoever of anything that Christ has taught, and you must understand everything that Christ has taught. It's a theologically proposed proposition. But it is also that in the case that you are on an airplane, and the airplane was going down, and you are a practicing Catholic, and you had committed a sin, but you could not go to confession, that you, by turning at that moment, because of the emergency, not because of the convenience, because of the emergency of that, that you were to make a perfect act of contrition, perfect sorrow for your sins, without doubt, without leaving out anything, without any of that, that the church could supply because everything the priest gives you comes from the church. It's not disconnected from it. But now it's come to be, I don't need a priest. I don't need the church. I can just make a perfect act of contrition and be forgiven. But then the problem is with that intent. You must intend to do what the church does, but be prohibited from being able to do it. So it's basically practically to say that no man, can be an obstacle to you coming to the beatific vision. You're the only one that can. If it were that men were to lock you away, having committed a mortal sin, lock you away so that you could never get out, you would have no access whatsoever to a priest. And in there, you were able to make a perfect act of contrition, ecclesia suple the church would survive, supply in that case. But men now have made it convenient. It's too inconvenient. It's too far away. I can't trust anyone. I don't know. I'm in doubt. 
whether that person actually has holy orders. I'm in doubt. Once you do that, no go. You must intend to do what the church does, but be prevented from doing it. Really being prevented. The same thing with the see Mass on Sunday. You must intend to do it and be prevented from doing it. Really prevented from doing it. God knows these things. The other part is marriage. Marriage is valid when two persons give themselves to one another. Two baptized persons. That is true. But you must intend to do what the church does. It's a sacrament. Matter, form, and intent. The intent is in the ritual. The ritual is that you receive communion and have a sacramental marriage. That communion comes from the priest at the altar. You can't have that outside of the church. So this whole attempt by modern man to evade the church, evade relationships, evade putting myself in this situation where I have no control, and then to justify it by saying that, oh, so-and-so taught, or this teaches, or that teaches, that what is necessary is this, and therefore I can have it. No. The minute you do that, you do not intend to do what the church does. And you're not being prevented by anyone other than yourself and your own fear from receiving the sacrament. And that will not be supplied by the church. Because the church is supplying it every day. One last thing about this. There is a church. There is a faith here. You can come here. You can move here. There are jobs. There are housing. There is daily mass. There are all of the things that you need. Everything you need is here. If you choose not to make that your first priority, then you cannot stand before God and say, I would have, but I couldn't, because you can. It's the same thing with baptism of blood and desire, right? There's no water. There's water everywhere. You can't use this excuse. So please do not fool yourself and justify your actions based upon a desire to remain independent and to not trust anyone. God has called us into a relationship. The church is a relationship. It is a relationship not based upon a contract, an exchange of goods, but a covenant, an exchange of persons.